morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today, we're going to be talking about the Monstrum Raven. Now, this is a bit of an interesting optic, but before we get into that, you can go ahead and like, share, and subscribe because all that sort of stuff is free. Uh, if you want to, go ahead and comment literally anything down below. I also have a subscribe star, which is basically just a pro to a Patreon where we just did a ton of giveaways, including this guy right here. And on top of that, if you feel so inclined, you can also go ahead and pick up one of my Mark I upper receivers from my website. Now, before we get started, full disclosure on the optic, Monstrum did actually send this out to me. I've done videos for them in the past where they've sent me products and then I do a review on them. However, there is no money changing hands. And in fact, I'm not keeping this. This is already given away on my subscribe star. So just know that there is that relationship there. But again, I'm not paid to say one thing or the other. So these are just my opinions on what is a pretty decent budget prism optic. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some of the boring specifics. So this is, as you can probably tell, a more compact prism style optic. This one here is of course set at 3x magnification. Monstrum has some other models at 3 and 5. However, the Raven that we have here is their more compact design, which as you can see from some other competitive options, well I shouldn't say really competitive options, is a fairly compact optic, especially when you compare it to, you know, scopes or LPVOs and stuff like that. We do have a very chonky 6061 aluminum body, which is going to be very strong and very durable, and we have an overall weight of 14 and a half ounces. Now, for its size, that's very heavy. Like if there's a red dot this size, usually it's like nine, 10 ounces, something like that. So this is a nearly a pound optic in a very compact uh, package. So this feels like it has a lot of weight to it, but again, it's still gonna be lighter than basically any scope or LPVO on the market. Though again, the trade-off is of course that fixed 3X magnification. Now, if we talk about the mount for just a second, I don't believe this is compatible with aftermarket mounts, so like a Comp M4 or an ACOG mount or anything else like that. So I believe you are kind of stuck with the standard uh, height, but however, the height is about 1.5 inches, which is very comfortable for, again, more of a prism style optic where you're going to be very close to it anyways. Talking about that, the claimed eye relief is between three and three and a half inches. Uh, however, I would say that the eye relief is more of a very tight three inches. So basically, to get a perfect sight picture, you need to be, uh, that's about as far away as you can get for a perfect sight picture, but the more comfortable is gonna be a little bit closer than that. So honestly, most of the time it's gonna feel more like two and a half to three inches, though again, for a 3X prism optic, that's fairly standard. The field of view on the Raven is 39 feet at 3X, which if you extrapolate that down to 1X, it'd be around 120 feet. Now me personally, uh, at 1X, anything over 100 feet is good, 110 feet, excellent, and when you get up to close to 110, or sorry, 120, for like an LPVO, that would be near the top tier in terms of field of view. Now there are other uh, prism optics like the Trihawk that I just showed you that do outclass this in terms of field of view. The Trihawk has like 56 or 52 feet uh, field of view at 100 yards, which is very, very good. And then there's even a 3X prism from Primary Arms that has like a 60 plus foot field of view at 100 yards, which is just insane. However, again, for a more budget style prism optic of about 100, 120 bucks. This is quite good. Now that is honestly kind of going to sum up the entire review uh, that this is going to be a pretty good budget prism optic. So some people really like prisms. They don't necessarily like a big scope or an LPVO for whatever reason, and they just wanna run a prism optic. It works better for their eyes for whatever reason. And of course does not take up that much rail space. And this model, it does of course come with an illuminated reticle. You do have two colors, green or red, and the illumination is actually not bad. It's not perfectly daylight bright, but it is more than bright enough for a lot of scenarios, and it's a lot better than what you'll see on uh, LPVOs and stuff like that. So I do actually like the illumination on it. One thing that is going to hold this optic back compared to other prisms that I've seen is actually going to be the glass quality. It's just not quite as bright as a lot of other prisms that I've seen. It's not terrible, again, considering the money, but it's not gonna have the same sort of edge-to-edge -edge clarity, detail, brightness that I've seen in other optics. In fact, the Swamp Fox, the Trihawk, which is again about three times as expensive, this has excellent glass, again, for the money. This is only about $300, so compared to $300 optics, this has very, very good glass on top of the excellent field of view. 
Uh, but the Monstrum Raven is of course a more budget style optic, very similar in terms of size and weight, but just not going to compete in terms of glass quality or clarity. On top of that, another thing that kind of holds this optic back a little bit in my opinion, not much, is going to be the circle dot reticle. So I'll go ahead and show you guys some B-roll of the actual reticle itself. So in the center of the reticle, you have a three MOA dot, which is a little large for prism style optics. Generally speaking, anything that has magnification, I'd like to be a little more precise than that. I'd like to see it down to about one MOA dot or like a chevron or something like that that has a little more precision built into the reticle. Now on the outside of the dot itself, you have a, what I believe is a 30 uh, MOA ring, which is perfectly fine. And I actually did find that the reticle was more than precise enough to take shots out to two, 300 yards, no problems. And that's probably as far as most people want to take a 3X prism. And with 556, five, you're not really experiencing much drop out to two, three, even 400 yards. So you can use just the simple dot and just hold over at three and 400 yards and be fairly consistent as long as you know your holds. And of course, depending on your rifle, your ammunition, all that sort of fun stuff. So while generally speaking, I like to see a little more complex of a reticle, maybe an MOA ladder, just something to give me some uh, reference point as to what I'm shooting at, how far away it is, that sort of stuff. I do understand why they went with something so simplistic. And again, inside of like 200 yards, it does not make a difference whatsoever. You're just going to put that dot on whatever you're going to shoot and then pull the trigger. Now, again, it is a 3X prism. Now that's not really a precision rifle scope. So again, I wouldn't be taking this beyond like four or 500 yards as I really don't think that's the sweet spot. I think the sweet spot for this optic is going to be between 50 and 250 basically. Inside of 20 yards, uh, for me personally anyways, with my level of training with prism optics, with 3X prism optics, I should say, there is a bit of a slowdown up close just because you have, of course, tighter eye relief and tighter field of view compared to like a red dot or something like that. So it is going to be a little bit slower in terms of target acquisition, especially if you have to do like a big swing in a target transition. It can be a little bit difficult to properly align your sights on the first try or to get it very, very quickly like you can do on like an LPVO on 1X or like a red dot like I mentioned before. So I think you are gonna be slightly slower with something like a prism optic or a prism uh, with magnification like three, four, five X up close. But again, that's not their sweet spot. So if I was planning on running this on something that wasn't just like a target gun or a hunting gun, because this would be great for like varmints and stuff like that, I would probably be running an offset red dot on, on the front of the gun. Uh, just because there is no way to mount an optic to this. It is a very simple, very strong uh, aluminum body. Now, since I've had this for several months, 99% of the time it's been on my 762x39 10.5 gun, and it has performed very, very well on there. I've had no problems with it whatsoever in terms of holding zero. I have used it also on some 5.56 out to a little bit longer range. 5.56 is a very flat shooting cartridge, so it's very easy to take out to two, 300 yards without any sort of reticle or holds or anything else like that. So depending on the caliber that you're using this for and your desired distance of shooting, this could be very good or very bad again, because that reticle can hold you back on longer range situations. Or if you're using a caliber that has more drop, like say 22 or something like that, where you're just going to be holding up in space. Now I've already mentioned it a little bit, but prism optics tend to be very, very tanky in their construction because they're a very compact block of aluminum and glass, which lends to their durability versus like a thin 30 millimeter tube that is not particularly thick and then has glass on the inside and it's long, like 10 inches long. Whereas this obviously has a much more condensed, much more compact hunk of aluminum. And you can see on the whole of this that it is very, very thick. You could probably beat this with a hammer or use this as a hammer and it would be just fine. Now, that being said though, I think one thing that does hold this optic back a little bit is actually going to be the mount. It uses two very small locking tabs to hold it in place and there is no integrated recoil lug. That being said, when these are torqued down properly to 30 inch pounds, as it says in their manual, which is nice that they include how much it's supposed to be torqued down to, which these were torqued down to spec. The problem with these is that, again, there's no integrated recoil lug and there's not a large enough clamping surface to create a even 
uh, hold on your Picatinny rail. So when I did the double drop test on this optic, like I do on all my optics from shoulder height onto dirt and rocks, uh, this did have a fairly substantial shift in zero, though again, the optic itself is just fine. I re-zeroed it and was continue and was perfectly fine just to continue on shooting. So in terms of durability, I think it's really tough to break one of these prism style optics because again, it is just a chunk of aluminum with the glass very nicely kept inside of all of that. So these are gonna be very, very durable optics. However, because the mount is kind of the weak point on here, it is going to shift zero should it encounter a harsh impact like a drop or something similar. Whatever situation you can make up in your mind, if this optic takes a sizable impact, it will probably shift zero. So basically the control group at 50 yards, shot a pretty decent five round group for crappy Tula 762 by 39. And then I did the double drop test, did another five round group, and it looks like the zero difference didn't shift. However, I had the same point of aim for the first group and the second group. So the group actually shifted to the right about three inches at 50 yards, which is equivalent to six MOA. Now at 100 or 200 yards, when it's like six to 12 inches, that can make a huge difference between hitting your shot or having it go somewhere where you didn't want it to. So for me personally, Combined with the fact that the glass is not all that great in here, it's a little dim, it's not quite as sharp as I would like to see it and as I have seen in some other budget optics. I would not use this, of course, for anything serious or anything like that. However, for a target gun, it is fun to shoot with. It is just a 3X prism optic, and if you like that style of optic, this is going to do it for you if you're on a very tight budget. So for a target gun, for a varmint gun, or for whatever sort of silly fun use case that you can think of, this is going to be perfectly fine for that. Though again, for anything serious, home defense, I would say no, just because it's a 3X prism, and I would say no for most 3X prisms. Um, and on top of that, I don't have any qualms about the durability of the optic, just the fact that it's not going to be ideal in virtually any situation, you know, between 50 and 250 yards. Most of the time you're gonna be much closer than that in terms of like home defense or self-defense or something like that. Um, and of course the fact that you don't know if you're going to be experiencing harsh impacts or something like that when you're using this. And if your zero is substantially off, you could potentially put around where again, you don't want it. So in general, would I consider this a great optic? Well, no, I wouldn't obviously for the drawbacks that I mentioned, the glass isn't all that great and it's not going to hold zero again after sharp impacts, at least like I've seen on other budget optics do. Not all of them, but some of them. Um, and on top of that, just by virtue of being a 3X prism, it's going to have a more niche use case scenario than something like an LPVO or scope or red dot or something like that. So. Uh, at the end of the day though, it is a decent budget prism optic. If you are interested in picking something up for around 100, 120 bucks, maybe for your kid's gun, maybe for a fun gun, for anything that's not a serious application and you just want something budget that looks like this, you think it looks cool, you, you really like prism optics for some reason. I'm not a huge fan personally, but I do think that they do have their application then this can be a good option for you. Again, provided that you are fine with this and having those drawbacks like the glass, simple reticle, and not going to hold zero. Though again, that's not necessarily the biggest thing since you're probably not throwing your target rifles or your fun rifles on the ground all that often. So that's about it for the video, guys. I know this is a little bit shorter of a video than I usually put out, but this is a little bit more of a simple, straightforward review and simple budget style optic. So if that is something of interest to you, go ahead and check it out. And if not, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe before you leave. And that's about it. Let me know down below what you think I should check out next. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.